Hey, how you doing? It's Jamesy from the band here. Sitting here with my main man, Aya Thorne. How you doing? And Jacqueline. Hello. Well, it's that time of the year again. End of the year, we thought we'd give you all a wee blast on the uh, podcast. Say hello. Fill you on on uh, our thoughts. How the year's gone and whatnot. Like highlights and all that stuff. Highlight for me, I'll tell you right off the bat, was the fall. When Dunkin' Donuts bring out their pumpkin donut. <laughs> I look forward to that all year. Surprise. Give me that pumpkin donut. I think my highlight was discovering that Dunkin' Donuts actually does a pretty good cup of tea. That was a game changer. There you go, aye. That was good. <laughs> How'd you get it? Two tea bags, extra three sugars. milk and three sugars. And get it done with milk, not Blech. cream. It's good stuff. I am not. It's only, only taken us about eight Donuts, years man. to figure it out, right? That we can actually get a cup, decent cup of tea. Get a better one in Starbucks. Just saying. Shut up, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Starbucks. Anyway. Well, on a serious note, eh? This right, year's sorry. tour, been all over the place. East coast to the west coast. Seen a lot of places, met a lot of people. A lot of good times. I think the highlights for me, apart from that pumpkin donut, has always got to be going through Loon Mountain Highland Games. Seen the, seen the scenery up there and, and being part of that amazing festival. And uh, the other the other big gun out there in Estes Park, which I said before, it's like the Rolls Royce <laughs> of the Highland Games scene. Oh, Just to be playing music, surrounded by those mountains and the the amazing crowd that comes down the front of the stage. It's it's just some buzz, you know, it gives you some buzz. It's uh it's just a gem, a real highlight of the tour. And you gotta give a big shout out to the old bomb squad. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> What about you guys, man? Have you got a, you got a highlight of the tour? Oh, I don't know. I, I've got to agree with you, I think, on uh, certainly Estes Park. Estes it's always stands out, you know? Always. You can't beat driving through the mountains and coming out at Estes Park and just getting that view every time. Just knowing that you're going to have an awesome weekend, getting a chance to catch up with everybody and and uh, play some good music, hang out with some, some cool bands and just generally have fun. I liked the uh, the Annapolis Irish Fest as well. That was good, apart from the heat and the the rain. But it's a <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good festival. It's really well run. A lot of good bands. That's true. Yeah. They don't work you too hard, which is always good with me, you know. <laughs> a good crew. That was that was a really good festival, and they put you in a class hotel, which always helps. Yeah. You know, in some dirty wee scabby hotel yeah. where there's. They make you park round the back, right? <laughs> <laughs> With our van, People try would to you blame you them? As you're going in the front door of the hotel. <laughs> no, 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 no crystal mess for me today, thank you. Oh no, I'm working after all. <laughs> no, it's nice, nice, uh, nice gig. Good yeah. people that run it. Yep. Ah, uh, that's one of that's definitely. I'm really looking forward to that one next year. We are signed up for it, which is what something like the twelfth of June next year. So if you're in the Maryland area, get yourself there. It's you'll no regret it. It's a really good Irish festival, but it's got a good vibe about it. I'm not knocking the Irish festivals, but it's got a really good vibe about it. You know, a lot of quality bands there. You can't wax starting a tour in Florida. You know, we're getting out of the uh, Scottish winter. And <laughs> you just jump on a plane in uh, wet, miserable, cold Glasgow. And get off the plane in warm Florida. <laughs> and you know that you're there there for, what, eight weeks or something? Mm -hmm. Stoting about Florida, looking at palm trees and pelicans, <laughs> playing music. <laughs> Heck of a way to start the year. You can't it's make out that it's too much fun or I'll get in trouble. It's hard work, though. It's, it's terrible, hard, hard it's work. Terrible. <laughs> Nothing like a holiday <laughs> at all. Shh, Jackie. Don't say the H word. It's, it is, it's a heck of a way to start start a tour in here but you know and it, if you ask me it's getting stronger the Florida gigs are getting stronger it's definitely uh, the crowds are getting bigger it's definitely been they're growing the gigs are growing the there's a couple of gigs years. down there that if you ask me I think they're really some of the only gigs that are growing throughout the year a lot of the other gigs stay kind of stagnant you know they're not really they're not really growing but 
there's a couple down there in the Florida circuit that are, every year they get bigger and bigger and bigger, so they're doing something right down there. And for us as a touring band, it's, it's spot on, pretty amazing to be part of the circuit down there. It's good to see new faces, new energy. There's always a good collection of other bands on stage with us down in the Florida gigs as well. We always yeah. get to spend a lot of time with our good friends from Rathkilter. They're always uh, with us when we're on the road down in Florida. That's kind of home gigs for them and we see our buddies from Seven Nations as well quite a bit down there. So uh, it makes life a little bit easier when you're, you're touring and you're on the circuit with some good friends. So if you're part of the NAC army and you're part of the Albanach fan base, you obviously know that the band are filming a DVD at the moment, <laughs> putting together the Scotumentary. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it's going to turn out, I haven't got a clue, we've never done it before really, we've got two DVDs to our names previously, but this is the first time we've taken cameras on the road with us and just... Yeah. Shot at festivals. It's a bit more in depth, isn't it? Ah, shot in the hotel rooms and shot in the van and and that carry on. So there's going to be a ton of stuff that will not get used. Ah, some poor editor's <laughs> going to have the work cut out big time. Like. <laughs> you you know, need to get a beat machine on the go as well. <laughs> big time, please. <laughs> Aye, whenever Donald's on camera, you need to beat, 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 beat. <laughs> you'll have subtitles anyway, won't you? Ah, you'll Easy. Need subtitles yeah. for Donald. But the cameras have been with us since oh, we started in January this year down at the uh, Catalucci Celtic Festival down there in uh, Fort Myers. Again, absolutely fantastic festival run by our friends uh, Greg and Marcy. But we, we kicked off the filming down there and uh, throughout the year just brought the cameras out to other festivals. We had them at uh, Estes Park and at Loon Mountain and Keltoberfest. It's it's certainly different. It definitely puts a wee bit of pressure on you to be on stage knowing that there's, you know, three or four cameras out there pointing at you, picking up every little mistake that you're making or whatnot. <laughs> it's adds a, an a different, uh, a different yeah. element, element pressure, to, eh? to playing on stage, but we're confident, well I'm confident, we'll get some good footage out of it all. Uh, I don't fancy being the editor. No. Nah. You've got to work cut out for them for sure. Ton of stuff to to cut out there. But I know big thanks to our friend Phil McFall, who uh, stepped into a bit of a void for us there and has really helped us out big time with a DVD. He uh he's a talented man anyway. Uh but I never knew he knew his way around a film camera <laughs> like that, you know, like a shooting and whatnot. He really he really took on the role as uh, Spielberg quite well. You're, you're, you're getting a wee bit complimentary life. here, Jim. Hold that, that's the only credit you're getting, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see, listen all to that. All that, that uh, works in my favour, Aya, you see, with all that working out and all that personal trainer nonsense that Phil likes to think he is when he comes out on the road. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he'll go a bit easier on me when he gets his hands on me at all weekend, you know. Aya, you are toast next time you see <laughs> still, me. Your workout. I'm still sore from the last time he made me work out. <laughs> you think that's bad? I'm not working out with him anymore. He's a bully. <laughs> anyway, back to the DVD, right? Well, they, we were talking about bringing it out Bringing it out for like January 2014, we were going to January 2014 again, Catalucci Celtic Festival and release it. But to be brutally honest and blunt with you, it's just nowhere near ready to do that. So we're just going to ask all the NAC fans out there to be uh, patient with us. It's just a, it's a work in progress, you know, mm -hmm. there's no point in rushing it, you know. It is coming. Yeah. yeah. It is getting there, you know, we're uh, working with a media company out there in Ohio and uh, you know they're going to look at all the stuff and, and help us put it together you know so I mean, we were going in one direction we've had to go in another direction but hey that's life you know just hey ho you get on with it 
So it will be coming out probably later on, 2014. Next year, at the end of April and the beginning of May, we're going to be taking our third Bronach trip over to Scotland. Mm -hmm. So it'll be us and uh, our good friends from Brother, and of course our good friends the Reeds. Um, and we're going to be taking, how many are we taking? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be taking a lot of people on yes. buses, on coaches, sorry, uh, and doing uh, our cool wee tours of Scotland. It'll be fun. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yes. But Jamesy will Coaches. regale you all with, <laughs> with historical tales. <laughs> historical tales, aye. Whatever of James wonder. can make up in his head. He's good at it. <laughs> <laughs> we've got one bus driver called, uh, see I've said it again, we've got a bus driver called it's Brian. Coach. It's Coach. And uh, he's a cracking little character. He, he knows Scotland inside out. But he gets right riled up if you call him a bus driver. And I've just <laughs> did it there, so I'll probably get a slap in the back of the head the next time he catches me. <laughs> He's a coach driver. He'll not be making you a wee cup of coffee now. <laughs> nah, no wee, cups of, no wee cheeky cups not of for, coffee. No, for him, but he's, he's actually, he, he's turned into a little bit of an attraction on the, on the tours themselves, you know, that, that helps make it all a wee bit more personal, you know. People look forward to seeing him, you know, with so yeah. many people who came this year, who had been on the original first tour. You know, and he's a character, you know, they all said, is, is, is Brian going to be driving the coach? Is he going to be there? And he said, yes. Yeah. So they look yeah. forward to seeing him because he has a character. Mm -hmm. A lot of people requesting to be on his coach, you know. That's it. He's a star in his own right. He's a good lad, you know. He's got some good patter on him. He knows places. And just a, just a genuinely nice wee guy. And that's just one of, another little thing that makes the Bronach tour personal. You know, you got, as I had just said, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Reed, who kick it all off and do all the logistics and put it all together. A lot of hard work, but they do mm -hmm. it. They get there. And, they, you know, they're responsible for a lot of those little personal touches. You know, and then there's us monkeys, the Almanac <laughs> troop that come on board, and our good friends uh, from Brother. And you put it all together and you, you bring all these fantastic people over from America who are keen and interested in seeing the country. And it just, I don't know, some magic kind of happens, you know? We get there, we see a lot of places, we play live music, we cram in as much as we possibly can. Right, it's, it's a busy tour, you know? It is. You get a lot for for such a short period of time. But what's really nice, I think a lot of folk have found over the years that, you know, it's not just a tour, it's like a social networking for them, you know, it's, they've made friends, they've made new acquaintances, they've learned a lot of stuff about Scotland, obviously, and a lot of stuff about, you know, their own folk, and and uh, I think that's a nice sort of side to it, you know. Definitely, a lot of these people, they're, they're friends for life now, you know, the people that have came on Bronac, they didn't know each other when they, when they met at Newark Airport. But then they've kind of like turned into best friends and, w and whatnot, you know. And that's just what happens when you go on the Brona tour. It's just, it's just a personal thing. Yeah. Everyone's there with the same sort of mindset. You know, they all want to see and experience the same thing and hear the same music and that. So you've already got a sort of a common bond before you get there, you know. Yeah. And then you get to bake it in a coach for a week. <laughs> <laughs> with us. <laughs> I remember the, what, the first day when the, when we all got on the coaches at Glasgow Airport this year, absolutely hammering down with the rain. Oh, so we got everyone on the coaches and, and the first stop of that particular tour was to the uh, Kulkruach Castle up in uh, Argyllshire up that way, but it was absolutely hammering with rain. But hey-ho, you know, we're going to go and see the castle anyway. So we took these like, you know, what was it? Well over a hundred anyway, well over a hundred people 
through the kind of moor and the, and, and the bog into the castle and they absolutely <laughs> loved it but they were all soaking they're all drook it coming back to the buses and there was at least two or three people who had slipped on their backsides so they're covered in mud and everything so that was our first day in school and yeah. they were soaking their backsides were covered in mud you know and they just had this face of dejection yeah. they, you know straight off the plane in a wet arse <laughs> yay money well spent <laughs> they didn't look too happy they were kind of like oh, what have I got myself into but once we got to Auburn and they got cleaned off and got a few pints of a few pints of Bellhaven down our throat, man. It was a different different kettle of fish. We were all mm. back on for them. <laughs> good crack. It was good times. That's what you expect coming to Scotland, right? You don't know what you're going to get. You expect rain. Get out of the way in the first day. Because the weather was nice after that. It was. Right? It was, it was glorious. Nice. Beautiful sunshine. <laughs> it was as well, aye. Right. It was we've some always, good days, aye. We've always been lucky that, that way. Well, doing it again next year. We've got it again. So I was saying there, it's uh, April and May. And we're running the the Northern Tour, as we're calling it. And we're also, it's going to be a brand new tour, never done before, where we're going to go down to the borders and explore the borders, a cheeky little nip over into England, have a look at Carlisle and the ancient castle down there, which has got some tremendous Scottish connections to it, with the Jacobites and whatnot, and obviously Wallace and his men there as well. And uh, which is something I'm really looking forward to is we're going mm-hmm. to go to Hadrian's Wall and have a wee sniff about Hadrian's Wall. That absolutely fascinates me that you're, you're standing on something that was built by the Romans. So that's that's probably going to be the, the most exciting thing for me is, is to go there. So those are the two Bronach trips we've got going, but we're also doing the cruise. <laughs> a, brand, <laughs> a brand new thing for Albanac. And we're taking... Uh, our favourite cheeky little rascal from brother along with us, Mr Drury. He's going to come along and guest uh, guest spot on stage with us. It's, it's going to be unbelievable. I can't even remember where we're going, to be honest with you. I think we're going to Labadee Island, we're going to the Cayman Islands, and we're going to Jamaica. Yes. There you go, bingo. Right off the top of my head. Well done, Jim. But I wouldn't be surprised if the thing doesn't even leave the harbour. <laughs> Don't yeah. say that. You know, if Donald gets a hold of the captain... Oh. The, the the boat's no even the how, how big's the brig? How big's the brig? Yeah, have a brig, aye. <laughs> That's going to be his home for the next seven days. Oh, what has Bill Reid done? <laughs> aye, so, so, if it all goes wrong, it's Bill Reid's so problem. On Bill's toes. And if it's fantastic, then we'll take the credit. Yeah, it's all <laughs> nice. It's all <laughs> nice. Now, it's a brand new thing. It's uh, We're taking, I think we've got the number so far, there's about 80 people coming on the cruise with us. You know what? It's just live music, and it's 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 a holiday. It's a vacation. It's your vacation. You know, we want you to have a good time. We're going to have a good time. I've never been on a cruise before, so I don't yeah. know what to expect. But what a way to start two thousand and fourteen! If you're thinking about it, if you're on on the fence, thinking about coming or not, get yourself there. Get your husband's credit card or get your wife's credit card. Go on, put on the card, pay your way. You'll not regret it. What a way to start 2014. Be awesome. The Albanach goes to sea, or Scotland goes to sea. Check out eastofhebrides.com, get in touch with Bill or Karen Reid. Go on, do it, treat yourself. And also Jimmy's going to be wearing a mankini for the duration of the cruise, so no, no, that'll, be no. way a gold one. that'll be way <laughs> worth it. A gold <laughs> one. <Yeah. laughs> I was going to do it and then I looked online at mankinis and it was just too traumatising. Oh, were they too expensive, you tight bastard? <laughs> yeah, that too. I mean, it would be funny. Not that funny. <laughs> Not 20 quid funny. Remember, remember Do- Donald wore a mankini once. Remember yep. down in Florida? Uh, I, unfortunately, I can't even forget it. Went yeah. to a house party Burned and Donald breathed out with a mankini on. Yeah. It was not Playing the pipes in the pool. Yeah. Playing the pipes in the, in the swimming pool with a mankini oh, yeah. on. Yeah. Some things you can't unsee, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, next year we're going to change up the uh, tour schedule a wee bit because Scotland. <laughs> Scotland. <laughs> Aye, laddie. <laughs> oh. Scotland. Scotland goes to the, the polls to vote for her independence. And, uh, well, you know the band. We're all proud. Proud Scots. Proud children of Scotland. So we're going to be home for the vote and the the big kind of buzz and the lead up to it and all, all the, the drama that's going to go on and the lead up to the vote so we're going to be home for it which means we have to unfortunately sacrifice some of the uh, shows that we usually do we usually turn up and do and, and you know that's it's with a heavy heart you do that to be honest with you because some of these some of these festivals speaking on, on from my point of view like I only get to go to these places once a year so and I really look forward to going there and now I'm not going to get to go there so you know it is with a heavy heart but we need to be home for this it's history isn't it it's, it's history it's happening you know? whichever way it goes it's you'll be able to tell happening. your grandkids about this one where were you when the vote happened you know yep. whichever way it goes you know you'll still be able to it's, you can't miss it but saying that you know we we Changing up the the touring, the touring times a little bit, and when we usually tour, it, it's allowing us to bring, it's allowing us to bring some new gigs into the fold. You know, just saying there, one of the gigs that we won't be able to do is the, uh, is the Long Peaks out in Estes Park. <sighs> really sad about it, but yeah. luckily yeah. for us. The uh, Pikes Peak Celtic Festival has got in touch with us, so we're going to be there in June. I think it's around about June the twenty second or something. But just nip on the internet and check it out. That's a brand new gig for the Albanac, and it's it's it keeps our hand in there in Colorado. You know, gets us there, gets us to Colorado, and we get to see the sights and see the people. Out, <laughs> and we just get to gig in Colorado again because it's such it's such a highlight for us. So. You know, if you if you're feeling sad because Albanac won't be at the Estes Park, come down to Pikes Peak, Colorado Springs, and support us down there. You're gonna love it. It's just the same stuff. You're gonna love it. <laughs> we're also coming in a wee bit early, and we're we're doing uh, a festival down in the, the Florida Keys. First time Albanac's ever been in the Keys. Lovely. Yes, looking <laughs> forward to that one. Again. What a, what a, way, what a start. way! Always wanted to go to the Keys as well. Yes. Flip flops, straw hat. <laughs> Sit back, light your pipe, and buy your handiwork. <laughs> so that's one to look forward to. That's uh, you can't you can't knock that. We're going to do that. Then we're going to do the cruise, and then batter into some of the some of the kind of normal work that we usually do. We're also going to be at the right at the beginning of August. We're going to be the Virginia Highlands Festival. That's a new one for Albanach. Been cool. in that neck of the woods for a while, yeah. Eh? No, it's, a, it's, it's one of these. We have get you've got a good fan base in Virginia, but we just never get the chance to actually gig there, you know. Yeah, that'll yeah. be good to get back. Mm -hmm. It will be good sure. to get into that neck of the woods and and get a show done. A yeah, days. well, I mean, we're still working on the schedule, so it's just you keep your eyes peeled, don't you? you? Just check out Facebook. That seems to be where everything's going right now. The old Facebook, and you just keep your eyes open for anything new. If once uh, our agent. The lovely Karen sends us a new gig, man. It usually just gets straight up on Facebook, so you'll know as soon as we know, kind of thing. You know, there is, there are offers come in all the time, kind of thing. You know, if we can do them, if we can do the festival, then we certainly we we do it, and you'll know as soon as we know. We put it on Facebook. There is stuff coming in all the time, so just keep your eyes on it, guys. Right, so starting probably early next year, we're going to start putting our heads together, getting some some more material mm. uh, for our next studio album. Yes. Which, uh, as always, is a lot easier said than done. Exciting times. But, no, we've got a few ideas bandying about the now. Mm -hmm. We just have to, just really have to book the studio time and... 
Well, it's, it's like you, anything. It's like it's a bit of a long process, you know. Aye. It does not happen overnight. No, it doesn't. It takes a, a bit of time, the creative side. And Put your ideas on the table and then yes. practice them and then they change and then... It changes again. And or we stop doing it all together mm-hmm. or we forget. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a good time, you know. I enjoy the whole process, but it does take... It does take a little while to, to get it all together. and Just that uh, time's really the issue for us. When it comes to recording a studio album, because we're touring so much and we have to tour in order to, you know, live mm-hmm. and make money, it's finding the time at, on tour and after tour to get together and spend that amount of time, you know, trying to, doesn't, trying to come up with new ideas. and Yeah, it doesn't leave us much time to have everybody in the one space yeah. at the one time um, to, to you know, rehearse and write and, and you know, get and it all together. But when it's, you're dealing it's with just pipes and drums, it's, it's hard to kind of keep it sounding, like, fresh <laughs> and new when, you're, when you're, you're dealing with the same sort of it's, set of instruments all the time. That's you know? the challenge of it and that's the part that's fun. That's what, yeah. that's what makes it good. Is it that it's produce an album with four drums and a bagpipe? Yep. And and, and try to make not repeat it sound, yourself. Yeah. Ah, you know, that is the that's the biggest probably the biggest obstacle that the band faces. You know, you, you know, come yeah. up with new drum rudiments and you know. You don't want to start off with having guitars that. and stuff, and you know you no. want to keep no, it. No, I mean that's, to, that's, to the roots that's not that's not that's who not we really. are. You've got to stay true to so you've got true, to true to what we are and who we are. You know, you cannot bring. Uh, like a rock influence in there, you know. There's other bands doing it, and, and credit to them. But that's not us. We have to stay true mm. to who we are. Yeah. And it's primal pipes and drums. So the the big challenge is producing more more material out of just those select instruments right there. Try to make a different picture with the same set of jigsaw pieces. There you go. <laughs> That's far too philosophical. <laughs> I know too. where the hell did that come from. Yeah, <laughs> you had that you're one stored up. I can see it in your eyes. You're <sighs> tired out now. Just oh, go for a sleep. Have son. we not? Right, night, night, y'all. That's it. Your blanket. That's it. I should have known better than to try and sing. Smart. In front of you, bastards. <laughs> But it's there, man. The new album. We are talking about it. You know, we get asked the question a lot. It's we're talking about it. We we know we want to do it. It's there. Just gonna start it's working a bread on and butter, it. You know, yep. just, it will happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will happen. Like every album we've done, it starts <laughs> from somewhere. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, okay, we're on to the questions now. Um, we we sent it out there on Twitter and on Facebook to ask everyone to send their questions in for us. Anybody wanting to know something interesting or maybe not so interesting about us? I thought they would like uh, put them like publicly on Facebook, but see the amount that came into the private messages. <laughs> oh, 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 those kind of questions. Is it? Aye, it wasn't. It? <laughs> They're the questions we won't be asking. No, it wasn't. It? Like I thought it was like I just put them there and we'll read them. But the the, the think, private messages inbox just yeah, I absolutely think it, lit up. It was a bit of a, a bit of a you confusion know, I there. Thought, you know, so there was sigh. Maybe they just didn't oh. want anyone else to know what question they were going to ask. That, that might have been that, but the old finger was on the delete button quite a lot. <laughs> they had nothing to hide. They should have put it out there on a public Aye. forum. <laughs> <laughs> Nosy buggers. Well, here is the first question, and I think we've uh, we've been asked this um, several times, and I have to say, it's a it's a good one. Um. Are we ever going to do a Christmas album? No. <laughs> Are we? Bah humbug. <laughs> ho ho, no. 
<laughs> oh no! The Grinch sitting next to me has just said no. I'm going to say that. I'm say that. Ho ho no! no. <laughs> 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 they can but ask you never know you never know but we're at the just, moment I think it's we're just going to take delightful. one of our first albums and remix it and put jingle bells in the background <laughs> and repackage it that is so bah humbug I, oh, oh no I was going to sit that's, there and read the night before Christmas when, you, when you've got children they take all the fun out of Christmas they just make it stressful <laughs> I used to have a friend up in Fort William and it, it's nothing to do with a Christmas album but it just makes me think about a guy who was mean <laughs> and, uh, you know how like in Scotland, we have the ice cream van that comes round the streets and they go ding a 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 ding plays a tune. And all the kids go running out it for the ice cream van. Now, you have the same thing over there in the, in the colonies. And uh, so I'm sitting with my pal there in Fort William and a ding 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 a ding. And I look at his kids and there was no excitement at all. And I'm thinking, what's going on in here? I'm thinking to myself, why aren't they? up tugging at their dad to get money and running out into the street and the ice cream came and it went and the kids went away and played in the back room or whatever so I, I says to John I says excuse me John I couldn't help but notice what was that all about and he said you see James he said when they were young I told them that see when the ice cream van comes and it plays its tune <laughs> That means that it's getting no ice cream left <laughs> and it's ran out of sweeties. <laughs> so when it comes down the street playing it's ding 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 He says that's why you'll see a look of dejection in my kids' faces. <laughs> oh he's ran out again. Daddy, we need to move to the other end of the house and estate <laughs> no, so that we terrible. can be first come, first served. Like you miserable bastard, John. <laughs> Oh, poor weens. You try to say I'm mean. I reminded you of that. <laughs> <laughs> you reminded me of that. Funnily enough. I was only joking. Anyway, Christmas yes. album. I think, I honestly think we should we should get Aya sitting there reading The Night Before Christmas. I'll do that. The rest of us will do the voices for it. <laughs> I'd like to do it. It's something we should consider doing. Yeah, yeah. it would. Again, something that, you Here know. There we go. It won't be out this year. Just how hard it is to get an album together, and you two are already talking about a Christmas album. Yes. Right. Okay. Let's call that a maybe. I am squirming. We'll move on to the next question. I'm upset at being called mean. Well, this is one for you. Well, both of you, really. Um, there's a there's a lot. Somebody had said, you know, I see a lot of young folk out there. You know, they, they're mimicking the tattoos and the placement of the tattoos. Um, and it's cool, you know, they're idolised the band enough to do that. But does it bother you? Does it annoy you? Not really. I mean, it's, Or do you think it's cool? I mean, we're a couple of really cool people, so why wouldn't people want to copy us? <laughs> <laughs> Strike that last bit. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean... No, seriously. I mean, obviously you see a lot of... It depends. I mean... A lot of people have got the same, like we've, me and James have got a lot of Pictish stuff. So, yeah. I mean, that, that artwork's out there, that's for anyone. So, maybe if someone's seen us with it and think, oh, that's pretty cool and they get it, that's fine with me, you know. But if they start <laughs> copying, like, the eagle I've got in my chest and stuff like that, yeah. I think that would start freaking me out. Yeah, getting really, like, absolutely mm -hmm. all the tattoos yeah, in exactly but, I mean, the same places. Like, the Pictish yeah. stuff, that's for anyone and it, they do make cool tattoos, you they know. They do, they do. Well, I mean, that's, I guess that's what the artwork is about. You're, you're spreading designs and it's styles. Your it's your tattoo. It's your skin, your tattoo. You yeah. do what you want. I mean, I'm not, I'm not bored. If somebody was to go out there and get the same tattoo as me, it wouldn't bother me mm -hmm. at all. It's your skin. You choose me. You do what you want with it, you know. Yeah. Just like I've done what, what I wanted to do, you know. Mm -hmm. So fair play, you know. I mean, I mean, if you're talking about the actual Albanaka logo tattooed on mm -hmm. people, then that's a different kettle of fish. I think that's... That is Absolutely. like a major thing to see somebody who's yeah. who's uh, willing to put that on their skin, you know, because they're so impressed. They get what the band is, they get the meaning of the music and everything. I mean, that's just like the ultimate well, you don't compliment. Get, you don't get yeah. any more devoted than that, do you? you? Know, it's, it's pretty old. It always takes me body. back when I see it, you know. It, you kind of leave you speechless, eh? And the thing is, it's not, just, it's not just, you know, 
guys or you know it's it's everything from young lasses and guys to you know older folk <laughs> coming up with it going you know I've just I've just got this put on here or on their wrist or I on remember, their ankle I remember or, like seeing the first one a few years ago and thinking wow that's far out there somebody's got the Albanac logo tattooed on them you know and then but it's 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 pretty commonplace now to see yeah. people coming up and, and show you their ink and it's the Alvarac logo and it, it leaves you speechless every time. It's totally. a major compliment. Yeah, it's very cool. I would I would love to be able to get like a, an album, like just get everybody to send in their pick of their, their Alvarac tattoo. Just get an album, you know. I think it would be really cool to see them all. Different styles, different interpretations. It's very cool. Anyway... Moving on. Um, okay. The um, the other question that somebody was wanting to, to know was uh, where do we get our inspiration for drumming? And where do we get our drums? Where does our inspiration for drumming and music the come The drums from? came off the back of a lorry. <laughs> it literally <laughs> did. <laughs> I mean, it was real. It was real out the back door or somewhere. <laughs> a wee bit of skullduggery. <laughs> went to this big company. Uh, I'll not sh- name the company. Sh- went to this big us. company up in uh, New Hampshire, and I just heard that they made. They they would actually sell you the shells and whatnot, you know. So I just breezed right in the front door of the place, as was my want, and uh, I basically get laughed at because they only sell the shells. And what not by the thousands kind of thing, you know, to like Peril and DW and all those big companies. So I kind of left, poor wee Jimmy left feeling all dejected, you know. <laughs> and as I went out the front door, there was this uh, this this guy kind of came sneaking out behind me and said, I couldn't help but over here, you're looking for some shells. Uh, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, come round the back of the building, you know. And uh, sure enough, he spirited me uh, what, I, what I required <laughs> out the back door and uh, a little bit of cash. Exchanged and uh, on your way, Squire. Thank you very much. <laughs> <Lovely>. <laughs> so that's the current drums that are, that are the, the 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 set of drums that are getting used in, in the United States. That's where they came from. <laughs> uh, still make me smile every time yeah. I look at them. And yes. like custom made fittings and everything on yeah. them. Yeah, no, so well, they're, they're, they're definitely one of a kind. Uh, they are truly one offs. Yeah, for sure. They're heavy and but it, it, they, they certainly look the part. Well, the, the custom fittings. They have a they have a feel about them now. Where does it? Oh man, where does the inspiration? The inspiration just comes from. For me, I, I mean, I'll I'll speak on my own behalf, mm-hmm. but it's when I hear those bagpipes, it gets me riled up, and I want to start. I want to start drumming. I want to start pounding. I want to start knocking out the flat four or whatever it is that I've. I've got to do in that particular track, so I, I get it. I just hear the pipes, and that's what it does to me. You know, the, the the hairs in the back of my neck stand up, and I get I get riled. You know, it's it's it is war music. That's what it is yeah. to me. It's it's war music. You know, I I picture you know all sorts of carnage going on in my brain. You know, and that's that's where my inspiration <laughs> comes from I'll be, I'll be being a sick of it yes. <laughs> all sorts of carnage you know I mean I'm ready to go to war right there and then on stage that's what it does to me you know uh, yeah. that's the inspiration it's, it's Scotland I suppose it's bagpipes it's Scotland it's it's you know, I don't want to sound cheesy here but it is a Wallace it is a Bruce it's you know it's, it's all of all, that. all the all the stuff yeah. that goes into uh, you know Scottish the wars, you know, that's that's where the inspiration for me comes from. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you on that one, definitely. It's uh, it comes from the history. I think for songs as well, uh, you know, if we if we're writing something ourselves, uh, well, for me, it it comes from Scottish history or things that are going on in Scotland or have gone on in Sco- Scotland. Um, or if we're taking a song from that's already been written, you know, it's it's uh, it's got to have some real meaning about it, something that, that uh, is, uh, well, you know, touches the soul, as they say. But, yeah, it's a passion. Anyway. I is going, mm-hmm. uh, Well, I've, I've got more of a, I'm not quite as warlike as Jamesy, I'm a bit more chilled <laughs> out. I just like, you know, I, I like, uh, like, being part of the, like, the atmosphere, like, we're up on stage and we're having a good time, you know, with each other and then like connecting with the crowd and yeah. seeing all their faces light up and get into it and 
Oh, I agree with you. Being in that. Yeah. You've got, you've also got like a, mu- a, a, a more musical background than me as well. But, but I mean, you've got that. You've you've trained as, you know, like mixing music and and so the, I think the beat, the dance beat, and everything. I mean, it has been said. Yeah. Al, you know, Alban tracks is like some kind of ancient dance music. Yeah. You know, acoustic mm-hmm. techno. Okay, you know, acoustic <laughs> techno. You know, I think you definitely tune into a lot more of that than I do. Yeah. You know, you get you get off on, on that acoustic techno thing. But I mean, that's yeah. the, that is the great thing about the sound. Everybody's taking care of a different aspect that's that's there in the mix. Um, if we were all playing the same thing, the same beat, the same sound, you know, obviously, it wouldn't it wouldn't be anywhere near the same. And it's you're bringing a different sound or feel or passion or yeah. or ability or energy to your particular part. And yeah. I think that's that's yeah, what makes everyone it. just gets inspired for. Well, different reasons or whatever. I just mm-hmm. get off in the and the the crowd reaction and stuff, you yeah. know, and, and help them be part of that, like that atmosphere. Everyone's having fun together, you know. Mm-hmm. You can't beat it. No, oh, it's great. You know? It's a it. buzz. <laughs> um, well, t- still talking about the drums. Um, somebody else was asking. Um, it appears we have one set of drums for American gigs and another for Scotland, and they're saying, "Can we confirm or deny?" Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. We used to take the same set back and forward, but then the the airlines got all fagin from all of our twist on us and started picking our pockets for too much money to do that. So the the sensible thing was just to leave a kit or a set up in the United States and a set up here in in Scotland. And as times went on, we've just started spending more time in the United States with a lot more gigs. Uh, so it was. The logical thing to do, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Patrick was asking, this is to you, Jamesy. Um, he's saying, D- do you have any formal music training, you know, either before or during your time with Almanach? Or did you just kind of get into it and go for it? Just got into it and went for it. I was flung in at the deep end back uh, in the days of the, the other band. I was just... Picked up and basically flung into the deep end. Here, get to grips with that, and then that's what I did. Just made it my own. So I've picked up, I suppose, working with, you know, different drummers over the years. I've picked up different things. I mean, my my particular job in Albanac is quite straightforward. Uh, so I don't get to explore much, I suppose. But I've picked up different things. You know, there's been some great influences. You know, working with two different lead drummers over the years has been good fun. Uh, I, I get to work with some other terrific drummers when I'm out on the road. You know, there's uh, Big Dalbo and Nicky Watson. You know, they, when you get to watch them and you get to actually stand up next to them and jam when I'm on drums, you you pick up little bits from them. But no, no, no training. I was just flung in at the deep end. I had to go on with it hmm. and just make that particular drum my own. Um, another question was this is completely off drums now but uh personal taste do uh, do the band members have a particular a favorite book or a favorite author oh mm-hmm. that's tasty yes that's a bit... food for thought there take a moment and think about it oh man i read so many books you though do. you do really? how, how can you how aya, can you answer can, that man aya yeah. is the bookworm of the band how can you answer that? i th- i guess is there a current I, book at the moment that you're really into? I'm reading a couple of books right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, th- I guess I'd have to say that I didn't pick up reading until I was like maybe 15 and I was given a book called Waylander by a guy called David Gemmel mm-hmm. and that just blew my mind. And that was from then, ever since I read that book, I've just been reading pretty much every day since. So mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go with that. Well, there you go. Yeah, that was cool. a good one. I I don't think I have any favourite author. I mean, I, I really like Nigel Tranter's stuff. Yeah. So I read a lot of Nigel Tranter. I, I pick them up and read them again once I've finished. But uh, I'm a kind of on-off reader. You know, I've, I'll, I'll melt my brain for a couple of months reading as much as I can get my hands on and then I'll take a couple of months off where I don't pick a book up. Uh, at the moment, I'll tell you right now, at the moment what I'm reading right now is... Uh, John Muir, 
the uh, the man that gave America their national parks. Uh, oh. Celebrated Scotsman. No, not a lot of people here know about him. But I'm reading about him at the moment. It's just absolutely fascinating. So that's that's my latest passion at the moment is John Muir, reading about him. But like I are saying there, I mean that that the author that he just spoke of, David Gemmell, mm-hmm. I've read all his books. Uh unbelievable. Take cool. you to another world. Yeah, I think for me, Nigel Tranter was was for me sort of David Gemmell. I remember picking up the stone and reading that and just getting absolutely carried away with the whole storyline of that. Yeah. Um and that that really kind of captured my imagination, but um, otherwise, I don't know. I quite like Frank Peretti. Um, I don't. I don't know. I could get I a guess. Kindle out and read you know. a list now if you want. Like, <laughs> like readings, readings uh, uh, basically Who, how I survive on the road, like those long drives and yeah. stuff. Who'd have thought that Albanac was so well read? <laughs> You'd be surprised. I don't know if I'm well read. I read a lot of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've seen you reading some. Fairly highbrow stuff, are you? It's, I'm, I'm it's impressed. just to make me look good. I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, I think this this is our last question. This is from Leo, a good friend of the of the band here in Scotland, and uh, asking um, if we could play um, one Albanach tune in two thousand and fourteen to celebrate, you know, what should be our independence. What would it be? Rampant's Revenge. Yeah, I've got to agree with you on that one. It would be Rampant's Revenge for me. Jamesy. He's chewing his nails. I just there. play them all. <laughs> <laughs> Have it. Get loudy. Uh, just one no great breaks. big long chew. No breaks, lads. Just keep <laughs> just going. Ah, I just keep going. <laughs> I just play them all. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need one. 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 Think long and hard. Play them all. That's all. <laughs> we got a song called Play Them All. No, that's one Could be one in the new album. album. Play them all. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with you on that one. Rampage Revenge would, would be my pick too. You're outnumbered. <laughs> there you go. Aye. Outnumbered. It's all good. Depends who's writing the set list, really, eh? Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you very much, guys, for coming and supporting the band throughout a very, very busy 2013. We're going to be back at it again next year. Gigs all over the place, all over the United States. Gigs in Scotland, and it's going to be a massive, massive year for Scotland. But we'll see you out on the road. Take care, guys. See you later. Take care. Jackie Holland on the drum. <laughs>